All right, everybody, how's it going? Uh, back again, recap WVU's second scrimmage of the spring this time. Once again, you know, if there's any doubt from the first scrimmage, defense, man, they, they dominated this scrimmage again. Once again, though, cold, wet, rainy, rainy, rainy weather, just like in the first scrimmage, and maybe that slowed the offense down a bit again, but either way, it was defense dominated, you know. Offense, they produced a few touchdowns, but most of the defense just, did, just handled this one. Uh, yeah, once again, media wasn't allowed to record, take any video from the scrimmages, but of course they, you know, they were they were allowed to watch it, and they I'm using some of the notes from uh, WV Illustrated again, Metro News, WV Metro News, and uh, MSN Sportsnet. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. The offense basically they just killed themselves with penalties and mental errors the whole scrimmage, you know. On the first play, you you seen it happen, Gino, uh, Gino actually hit Stephen Bailey up the sideline for 46 yards, but it was called back for a hold in the end zone, and actually defense got a safety out of it. So it's just a bad way to start the day and just kind of foreshown how the rest of the day would go. And went the same way with the mental errors and penalties and whatnot. It's you know, not a real good day for the offense. Hopefully they'll, hopefully they'll get better and whatnot, though, but who knows. The defense actually ended up scoring before the offense did. Uh, Paul Millard came in and was working with the second team. I think it was about their second possession. And Pat Miller, the junior, uh, intercepted Paul, Paul Millard. They was going in. They was all the way up to the 15. And uh, Pat Miller stepped in front of a pass, intercepted it, ran it back 85 yards for a touchdown. So defense got on the board even before the offense did. The offense's first touchdown finally happened when uh, Geno Smith, he hit Stephen Bailey up the sideline for a 22-yard touchdown pass. And... Uh, that was the first touchdown for the offense of the game. And Gino, Gino, once again, just looked real good. When the offense finally gets clicking, they get moving and everything, they, they do look good, though. They really do. But uh, the field goal team just having a terrible, terrible go out this spring. They just continue to struggle. Uh, Bittenkurt had, Tyler Bittenkurt had two uh, attempts that he missed. He missed two short ones from 23 yards and then another one from 27 yards. And uh, Corey Smith, the the senior, the transfer, didn't. He didn't figure in much better. He took one from 28 and got it blocked. But he did make a 49 yarder at the last play of pra at the scrimmage. So that's good. At least they ended it on a high note. But the, the kicking is just not good. They've, in their past eight attempts, they've made one. One out of their last eight. So we've got to hope that gets better, get something corrected there. Maybe the kicks are going low. I don't know. Maybe it was the wind and rain again. Who knows? But need to get the kicking team corrected. They haven't been good all spring. Didn't do good in the first scrimmage. And, this one was even worse. Like I said, one of eight and last ones. So hopefully they can get that fixed. Uh, Bruce Irvin, defensive MVP, again, of course. He's just just unstoppable. I can't wait to watch watch him play this year. Just the way he's been handling the offensive line and handling everybody. They're just he's just unblockable. And the first twelve plays of the scrimmage, Bruce Irvin had three sacks. Three sacks in the first twelve plays. That's that's unheard of. He's he's fast, he's strong, he just he just got a wheel and he gets in there and he just gets to the quarterback. And we've seen it last year. He was finished second in the nation in sacks and he only played, you know, limited amount of time. Wasn't even an all-time player. And this year's will be an all-time player. Who knows what he can do? Just can't wait to see. I'm real anxious about that. Offensive MVP again. Who else? Tavon Austin. The guy, he's just lightning quick, you know, so finesse, you know, just gets by everybody. He actually uh, took a had a reverse call for him. And Matt Lindemoo hit Bruce Irvin with the block and knocked Bruce Irvin down, actually, and sprung Tavon free. Tavon went up the side, was going up the sideline. The safety, Terrence Garvin, came by to get him. Tavon hit a quick juke, actually juked Terrence Garvin all the way out of the shoe completely and went up and scored a touchdown, 35-yard touchdown on the reverse. But as the whole day went, you can guess it got called back. There was a holding call. So, you know, it got called back. But Tavon still finished with the – he had that big run. He finished today with four catches for 48 yards and a touchdown. He called a touchdown, too, so it was a good day for him. On the running back side of things, Bernard Roberts, the freshman, man, he's still just improving. Like Holgerson said a couple weeks ago, he wouldn't have said it, that he didn't, you know, he wasn't improved, but he's just been working hard and continues to improve. And he, was, he actually practiced, I mean, was in the scrimmage. He was the first running back, the first team running back. And, again, last, last scrimmage, I think he had 53 yards and led the team. I know he led the team, but this, this, this scrimmage, he led the team again. He had 14 carries for 50 yards, so. Bernard Roberts, Bernard Roberts is looking good. You know, he's one of the candidates, like I said, to uh, have to get a starting job. You know, who knows who it's going to be at this point. But he looked real good. 
Besides the interception by Pat Miller I told you about, there was only one more turnover, and that was with Najee Good, the linebacker. He intercepted Geno Smith's pass. He was trying to throw it to Taylor and Austin, and it was the first play of the drive, and Najee Good just stepped in front and intercepted it. That was only two turnovers of the day, though, so that was good that they only had two turnovers, so it should cut down on that, but the mental errors and penalties really what killed him. Uh, Geno had another good, strong scrimmage. He finished 12-22 uh, with 141 yards and two touchdowns and that one interception. So that was a good day for Geno to get up there in the yards or whatever. And Paul Millard with the second team, yet again, played played real good, man, real good. He's looking good. If Geno goes down, I, th I think we've got a real good, capable backup. You know, People are saying Paul Millard is going to challenge Geno for the starting spot. It's just not going to happen. I mean, Millard, he's a good player and everything, but Geno's just – he's got the experience in college. He's a junior. Millard's only a freshman. You know, but Millard, he is going to be a really good backup for Geno, really good, you know. Kind of reminded me of when we had Pat White and then Jarrett Brown was the capable backup for him. Kind of the same deal, you know. We get Geno going down, Millard coming in. We won't miss a beat, man. But I'm hoping nothing happens to Geno, you know. I like Geno, and I think he's got a chance to actually, you know, Dark Horse Heisman candidate, he might – who knows what he can do if he just keeps improving and everything. But Millard finished the scrimmage. He had 13 to 22 for 158 yards, a touchdown, and that one interception. They got ran back for the touchdown, but still a pretty good day, you know. Uh, Daquan Hargett scored the only rushing TD of the game, and he finished with uh, 21 yards and seven carries. Right now, if you're asking me, I'm going to say that it's hard. It's between Hargett, Roberts, and uh, Sean Austin at this point for the starting running back job. Of course, you know, you're going to throw Bowie and uh, Dustin Garrison in there when they get here in the summer. And Trey Johnson still in the mix a little bit. He Trey Johnson finished the game with uh, 21 yards as well, but he did his on 16 carries when Hargrit only did his on seven. So, like I said, Hargrit right now at this point, it's Sean Austin, Daquan Hargrit, and Bernard Roberts compete for the starting running back spot. Austin didn't play in the scrimmage because uh, he's got a neck injury, and Ryan Clark didn't play either. He's got an injury too. But, yeah, those are the guys to watch out for. Bernard Roberts keeps improving. Who knows, he might get the spot. Uh, on the receiving side of things, uh, Stephen Bailey had two catches for 30 yards. 30 yards, you know, and then they had that one touchdown. Ivan McCartney, another pretty good scrimmage, two catches for 14 yards. And Ryan Nealon, man, you know, he's looking real good with the second team. He had, I think, 60-some yards in the last scrimmage, and this one he ended up with five catches for 56 yards. And, of course, you got Tyler Urban, the, the tight end that moved out of the receiver, and he just continues. He's the... I'd say he's been the star of the spring, you know, unsung hero, whatever you want to call it. He's just you no, know, he was flying under everybody's radar really, and just came out and he's he had two catches, 42 yards in this scrimmage, and he's just been kind of the go-to guy all spring, all spring, you know, just no one really counted him much. But he's he the Holgerson has said that he is one of the top four receivers. He says right now the top four receivers. Now that Brad Starks is out with the shoulder surgery and everything until. Fall, he said the top four receivers, not in any particular order, of course, but Tavon Austin, Ivan McCartney, Stephen Bailey, and Tyler Urban. That's why they moved Stephen Bailey. He was playing inside receiver. But they moved him to outside after Starks was hurt so they could have those four as the top four and get them all in there at the same time, you know, because they feel that those are the top four. When Starks comes back on, how it's going to shake up, you know, maybe Urban's going to take a spot. Who knows? But we'll see in the uh, summer, pra summer practice when Starks comes back what happens with the receivers. They've used real deep on receiver this year, actually. You know, they got the freshman coming in and uh, Kenneth Myers and uh, Dante Campbell still. And, of course, you got J.D. Woods, Tyler Urban, you know, Tavon, Stedman Bailey, Brad Starks, Ivan McCartney. You got Ryan Neal having a good spring. You can't count out Coley White either. J.D. Woods, like I said, he had two catches for 14 yards. But it's a pretty good thing, you know, defense dominated. But offense did have some bright spots in the scrimmage. Uh, now, next week, they'll practice again Monday and they'll practice again Wednesday. And then, of course, Friday is the Gold Blue uh, spring game. Hope to see a lot of West Virginia fans out there want to pack the house for that. You know, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to go out there. I'll be at the spring game. Hopefully, get down there early. They're doing that little gear sale before from like 2 to 6. So, I'm hoping to get out there early and hope to see a lot of my fellow Mountaineers out there. You know, it's spring game. Bring out a good crowd. Everybody can see this whole version offense live in person for the first time. Hope we have a good spring game. and. Good weather, hopefully, for a big turnout, you know. I think this, this has a possibility to be the biggest spring game in quite a few years for West Virginia. And I uh, hope to see you all at the spring game. Friday, April 29th, spring game kicks off at 7 p.m. Get some tickets online, wviewgame.com, or you can get them at the game, actually, at the ticket off at the wheel call or whatever it's called there. But hopefully see a few of my fellow Mountaineers out there. Spring game coming up Friday, guys. All right, let's go Mountaineers.